Simri, and this is my bird Tilly, who will interfere throughout this video. I'm reading to you today from my book, The Temptation of Dragons, and I apologise in advance to any Welsh speakers or listeners. Oh, I said, yes, everything's fine. Gregory, my spiritual director, studied me for a moment. What did you see in my garden? Rain, bushes, bird feeders. What did you see that I couldn't? I felt my mouth dry. What do you mean? Well, I'm pretty certain a snail shark has set up a den under my rose bush. I found the pellets. They cough up what they can't digest, just like an owl does. A snail shark, I repeated tonelessly. The room was spinning gently and I longed for a stiff drink. About the size of a Yorkshire Terrier, you saw it, didn't you? I nodded, not trusting myself to speak. Which means you must have recently touched a citizen from Floger. Am I right? A dragon, six days ago. I understand the sight wears off in ten days or so. The sight, I repeated, isn't that a Scottish term? If a term is useful, use it. Gregory's chair creaked as he leaned forward. Does Bishop Nigel know about the dragon? He came to see me a few days ago. I scrubbed at my forehead. Why do you know about all this? I'm in the Deliverance Ministry team, he shrugged. Most times we're called to visit a house or a person is nothing much. A little local disturbance, a troubled teenager, and either a blessing or counselling is what's needed. A couple of times, it's been something more. His grim tone warned me not to ask any questions. And then again, occasionally, it's because a creature from our sister world has crossed over. And unless you touch one recently, you can't see them. So you can understand why we're called in. If we're satisfied as not a poltergeist, we contact the Vicar General. Bishop Nigel has asked me to apply for the post. Has he indeed? Gregory studied me for a moment. Then he rose to his feet. In the meantime, can you help me trap this nail? What? It's already eaten one of my neighbor's cats, he grimaced. I have an old cat box and a slice of beef. I thought we could put the box outside, throw in the meat, and you could drop the door when the snail's inside. I'd rig up a rope so we'd be a safe distance away. What do you think? Have you seen the size of its teeth? I told you I can't see it, he said patiently. I do it myself, but I wouldn't know what has gone inside the box. Will you help me? I found myself agreeing. At least the rain had finally stopped. Gregory placed the plastic travel box near where I'd seen the snail and showed me how a twitch at the rope would drop the door into place. He placed the beef inside and we both withdrew to stand near the kitchen door. Father Gregory, a voice called over the fence. Are you there? Maddie? Gregory glanced down at me. I'm a bit busy right now. Nonsense, you couldn't possibly be gardening after all this rain. I need to talk to you about the bring and share lunch on Sunday. Sorry, he muttered to me. I'll be as quick as I can. He went through the garden gate to meet his visitor. And suddenly I was alone in the garden. I crouched by the house, staring at the sodden bushes. The rain was beginning again, only a few spots thus far. But I already decided I was not going snail baiting in a downpour. Gregory would have to find some other way of ridding himself of this pest. This won't work, you know. The voice was high-pitched male and had a Welsh lilt. I felt my heart sinking as I scanned the area. Was the snail taunting me? Why not? Snail sharks won't touch carrion. Fresh meat, that's what they'll eat. And you know this because... A movement in a tree drew my gaze. Two red-brown eyes blinked back at me. 
Dull yellow skin separated the eyes from steel blue feathers. A sharp yellow beak and clawed feet told me that this was a predator bird, although I'd never seen a falcon this small. He was only about a foot long. Then two ears swept forward, cat's ears, although trimmed with feathers. The creature stood, four legs. He had four legs, and the forelegs were covered with purple-gray feathers, and the fur of the same color continued along the sleek back to the feline hind legs. A furred tail emerged past short tail feathers and curled towards the purple-black wings. I blurted out, You're a griffin! Oh, she's a sharp one, she is! But I thought griffins were larger. All this ego in a large package drew on Guedo. Doors wouldn't be big enough to get my head through. He swooped across the garden and landed on a wheelie bin resting nearby. Know anything about snail hunting? This is my first time. Live bait, that's what you need. He cocked his head and I straightened under his scrutiny. You want this snail? I'm doing a favour for a friend. Good enough. I'll fetch the snail into the box for you. If you'd like to get a free copy of this book, please go to my website, chrissimri.com, and sign up for my newsletter. And I'll send you then a free ebook copy in any format you'd like. If you'd rather get your own copy from Amazon, please go there to get it for Kindle or to order a copy of the paperback. Happy reading. Thank you.